It's time for another preseasoning conversation with one of the 14 ACC head baseball coaches here on ACC Baseball, etc., which is presented by Pitch Logic, the system used by players, coaches, scouts, and instructors at all levels of play from youth leagues to the big leagues. The easy to use and affordable technology makes the platform accessible to every player at every level. All the metrics, all the features used at the highest level, you can see pitchlogic.com for more information. I'm Darren Vaught, glad to be with you, glad to have another ACC head coach with me today. It is uh, one of our favorites here at ACC Baseball, etc. I don't feel bad uh, saying that, Chris. Chris Pollard of the Duke Blue Devils. How's the off season been? I hope it's treated you well, Chris. Yeah, it's been great. It's been really productive. Um, as you and I were talking right, right, right before the podcast started, we just uh, welcome a new member to our staff. I added Brian Sikowski, who was the national cross checker and scouting director with Perfect Game, and and brings just a, a wealth of recruiting experience from that side of the amateur game, along with just a, a really, really vast array of contacts. And so he hit the ground running from a recruiting standpoint. I, I think we had a good fall and in off season and 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 now it's here right well before we dig into the the nitty-gritty baseball chris um I, i'm curious because i i find you to be a, a guy who who is you know well read and, and a, an observer of of certain things i'm, I'm just curious did you, do you have a favorite thing that you watched read or or listened to in the off season mm, great question I, I love these kind of questions i'm currently reading and it's a really cool read uh, Outlive by Peter Atia. It's a okay. really good book. Uh, recommended to me by one of my former coaches, Dusty Blake, who's now the pitching coach with the St. Louis Cardinals. He and I had lunch together right before the holidays, and we always swapped ideas on books. And he said, I got one for you. And so I've been reading that, and uh, that that's a cool read. And had a, 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 a great family vacation back over Thanksgiving to Costa Rica. And anybody that's looking to travel, man, what what an amazing country with amazing people! And so, just we've we've had a really full off season. Um, uh, you know, it's been productive from a baseball standpoint, but it's been a lot of fun from a family dynamic as well. Cool, very good to hear. Uh, I'm gonna have to jot that one down. I know I know you are that way with with friends and and coaching colleagues. So I figured I'd get a good answer in terms of a a good read there. Um, well, well, let's reflect on last year a little bit. It, it, we Look, we made no bones about it. You made no bones about it to me anyways when we had our conversations. Um, and that was, of course, prior to us being part of the D1 Baseball Podcast Network. But um, it was a, a, a challenge for you to, to work the pitching staff in a way that was as successful as it was, right? Once – Santucci went down with the injury. It was tough to really say, okay, we have starting pitchers. We we have middle relievers. We have closers. And your guys really embraced the the edict, if you will, that, that you guys gave to them that, hey, roles are fluid. We, we just need you when we need you. We need you to buy in, embrace it, trust trust the process here. And good things are going to happen, and and good things kept happening. Chris, it was it was wild. It was almost a sort of thing that, um, you know, not that people were skeptical. It just there wasn't a ton of precedent for it, and it hadn't been done at the level that you guys did it that often. Is that is last year? I'm not asking you to to to, to do rankings here, Chris, but. How do you view last year in terms of coaching coaching jobs for a season that maybe you are most proud of? Well, first and foremost, the 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 credit for the way we pitched and the style in which we pitched and, and the fact that it was able to work and be successful, it 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 it's it goes to Brady Kirkpatrick, our pitching coach, who did a, an incredible job of putting guys in a position to be, be successful. And understanding each guy's strengths and 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 what role would sort of suit and fit our guys for them to be successful, and as you mentioned, it took a group of guys willing to buy into an unconventional approach. So Brady and and the job that he did and our pitchers and their buy-in uh, that was that was the difference. But 
in terms of pride at 26 years as a head coach, I don't know that I've been more proud of a team in terms of what that group last year uh, accomplished. I don't think it was anything special that I did, but I, I can tell you that I just have an enormous sense of pride for and appreciation for that group of individuals and, and what they did and accomplished for Duke baseball. Yeah. Um, how, how was the fall? What's your assessment on how things looked? And um, I'm, I'm curious how how different that's going to be this year. I, I assume, you know, all all word on on Jonathan is that he's he's healthy and maybe as good as ever. So there you go. You've got at least one starting pitcher. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think everybody likes to get on these um, preseason podcasts and and feel you know feel great about how their fall went. I, I don't know that uh, our fall was exactly where we wanted it to be. I, I think we 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 left the fall still with a lot of questions, um, a lot of room for improvement in a lot of different areas, and so you know we've. Uh, we've been intentional about kind of highlighting for our guys how important the offseason would be, how important the winter break training would be, and how important this preseason would be. You know, I think one of the one of the things that guys have got to come to grips with is that, hey, this, th this is this year's team, not, not last year's team. And you've got to find your own personality and you've got to find your own voice to be successful and, you know, we've still got some questions and holes left from last year. I think, you know, on the pitching side, um, you know, we return a lot of pieces. And I think on paper, we've got an opportunity to really pitch and have depth. You mentioned Jonathan being healthy and, and, and Ben, he had a great fall and looks great, has looked great so far in the preseason. And you bring back a couple of All-Americans and really three All-Americans and Talon and O'Shell and Healy. Uh, to complement uh, a really talented Santucci and a guy like Aiden Weaver, who had a great freshman year. And we've, we've got some some pieces out of the portal and, and a really, really talented freshman in Kyle Johnson. And so, you know, I think on paper, we, 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 we have more answers than questions on the mound. But, you know, if you look around the field, we've got a lot to replace from, from an offensive perspective. And I think we have a lot of the holes to plug defensively and, you know, we had the luxury of having a, a terrific player and a terrific leader at, in, at shortstop in Alex Mooney, who's now in professional baseball. And, you know, that's a that's a big hole to fill, not just from a production standpoint, offensively and defensively, but the lead, leadership and the competitive fire that he brought to the field with him every day. It, it, you know, there's a vacuum there and we're still looking to fill that. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Just knowing the type of guy, type of player Alex was and, and still is, um, from a coaching perspective, how much can you do to sort of actively replace that? You can find a good shortstop who's got talent. Um, it, it's sort of the the intangible stuff. Right. Can, can you – to what degree can you recruit to that? In, in ways that you could recruit for, you know, bat speed or a guy who can, who's got a great backhand, who can, you know, range all over the middle infield. I do think it's very difficult to identify some of those traits and characteristics in the recruiting process. You certainly look for them. You certainly, uh, you know, you want to try to identify guys that are going to be a culture fit as well as a, you know, a, a, an ability fit when you're in the recruiting process. But you know, I think some of it goes back to the exact same thing I said uh, to the team the day after Santucci got hurt in the pit series last March. You know, that was it Saturday morning, and and Tuch had left that game early with an injury, and you know, we really the game had gotten away from us late. And I said, look, you know, we're Tuch is likely out for the rest of the year. Let's 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 talk about this uh, candidly and and not try to sugarcoat. It. I said, you're talking about one of the most talented guys in the country it's not going to be one guy that steps up and replaces him. We're all going to have to step up and be a little bit better. And, and to, to the credit of that group, they were. And I think the same thing holds, you you lose a guy like Alex Mooney, who, you know, you, you may coach a guy like that once every 10 years in terms of the type of competitive fire and, and the, and, and the leadership 
And so you, you don't look to replace that with one player. I think you've got to ask a bunch of guys to step up and be just a little bit better in the areas of leadership and competitive fight. Yeah. You made reference to a newcomer that is really, really intriguing in Kyle Johnson, a two, two-way two guy. Um, our Aaron Fit was on the, the main D1 show raving about him. Uh, I think earlier this week that was. Mm -hmm. um, what makes him special and a, and a good fit for your program? Yeah, it's a lot. It's, it, you know, it's a lot of different things. No, I, I remember the first time that I saw Kyle pitch. He was a junior uh, heading into his junior year, and it was in a in a tournament. He was pitching down at Campbell University, and I just thought, man, this guy's arm really works. It's easy. Throws a, uh, a ton of strikes got feel for a change up but you know his his travel baseball coaches were quick to point out hey this guy can really hit too and I said okay you know that's that's great but for me I kind of thought you know what we'll give him a shot to hit but he's probably going to wind up being more of a pitcher I still think that Kyle's future in professional baseball is on the mound but I, I think we were all pleasantly surprised as a coaching staff this fall at the, the, the type of at-bats that he gave us. Uh, the ball really jumps off the bat. He's got power. Um, there, there's there's bat-to-ball skill there. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, the more we watch, the more we, we realize that he's going to really factor in for us offensively. And, and, and he's also very, very good in the outfield. He's a very skilled defender, can really go get it. It's a plus arm. And and the, the other piece is, he really likes to compete. He's a guy that away from the field, he's always got a smile on his face. It's it's a it's an infectious, contagious smile. And you see it all the time. But when he steps between those lines, he's a different guy. And, and, and there's a competitive energy about him that guys really feed off of. And so, you know, I'm excited to see what what he's going to do this spring. Uh, he's certainly going to have an impact for us as a two way player. You mentioned the returners. Who who else, in addition to Kyle, whether new to college baseball or new to Duke baseball? I saw you got a couple more Ivy League grad transfers. I love it. Feels like that's just become a staple of of the program for you guys. Um, who who are some of the other new newcomers who who are are expected to to impact? Yeah, you know Ben Miller, who was an All Ivy League first baseman, but uh, two time All Ivy League first baseman, career three hundred hitter at Penn. He had the best fall for us offensively. Really steady at bats. It's gap to gap power. He's going to hit some balls out of the ballpark, but it's a lot of doubles and 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 just a lot of loud contact, a lot of loud exit velos. Uh, Zach Morris, who uh, was an All Big South player, All Southern Conference player at BMI as a shortstop is going to factor in for us. Uh, Wallace Clark, uh, who's a transfer from Oklahoma, was all freshman Big 12 team at Oklahoma, will play somewhere on the left side of the infield for us. Could be short, could be third. Um, Macon Winslow, uh, who's another freshman, came in with Kyle in this really talented 2023 uh, freshman class. Uh, you know, even though we return Alex Stone behind the plate and, and certainly Andrew Yu, who's got a number of starts under his belt as another talented catcher, you know, Macon Winslow is going to figure in for us behind the dish and at the plate. Just a really talented guy. Probably is advanced. We've had some really good catchers in this program over my 12 years, but probably the most advanced freshman that we've had at that position since I've been at Duke. Hmm. That's uh, that's all encouraging stuff. And um, remind me, I, I, you mentioned Stone, which is a name that we hadn't brought up yet. That There are some other returners. We talked about the pitching staff, but in, in terms of – position players some of that's going to look pretty similar as well right I mean um, yeah you know I mean first off it's a blessing for us that Alex is even back you know yeah. um, we get the leadership back he's a returning captain tremendous productivity it's just incredible that you know you got a guy who hit 17 doubles and 17 home runs and batted over 300 in the ACC and and you know should have been drafted but you know he will be this year I don't have any doubt about that but He'll anchor the middle of our lineup as 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 well as you know really stabilize our pitching staff with what he does behind the plate. Tall, Tyler Albright hit over 300 last year, hit 308 as a true freshman, uh, and, and played a really good left field. Devin Obi, 
uh, is back and, and, you know, odds on favorite to win the job in center field. Had a great summer in the Cape, was an all-star in the Cape Cod League this summer. Um, and so, you know, he, he's back and provides some experience and, and, and really uh, a guy that can really defend in center field. So there, while we lost some guys for sure, I mean, we lost some talented players and Bashirs and, and Mooney and MJ Metz, um, you know, the guys that, that were, were, were stabilizers uh, for that infield last year. Uh, there's certainly some pieces that are back. And, and so we're excited to build around those guys. Yeah. Now, it, we, we talked about the the pitching and, and guys like Aiden Weaver and uh, O'Shell and Talon and Owen Proch even. as Proch, as, for sure. I'm glad you brought up Owen. Yeah. As freshmen who got significant innings last year, is there a most improved among that group from, from year one to year two? Honestly, I think you just mentioned two of those names. I think Aiden Weaver and Owen Proch both made big jumps this fall. Really like what both of those guys did. And and you look at their numbers at the end of the fall. And, 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 and you know, everybody talks about, you know, the, the big four, Talon, O'Shell, um, and, and, and Healy, and, and Tooch. Uh, but if it weren't for the job that Owen Proch and Charlie Bielenson did – in our bullpen last year, there, there's no way we were in the position we were in at the end of the year. And and, and, and certainly you have, you have Bielinson back, um, steady Eddie, an everyday Eddie, a guy that just takes a ball whenever you need him to. Uh, Owen's a guy that's really durable and, and his stuff has really ticked up and just a tremendous competitor. And, and, the, and the transformation in Aiden Weaver, I mean, he's always been a guy with a big fastball was up to 99 last year, was 97, 98 this fall. But it's the it's the development of his secondary stuff that that was really impressive this fall, really becoming a more complete pitcher. Yeah, that's a, what, what strikes me too, Chris, about what we're talking about. We went through an entire cast of a pitching staff and then got to Charlie, who was, correct me if I'm wrong, the team's leader in appearances right. last year and, right. and maybe set a program record for, for appearances? You're right about both of those things. So it, the fact that we've just rattled off all those pitchers and didn't talk about Charlie Bielinson, you know, uh, it does him a disservice because, man, of, of all the guys that were glue on last year's team, his ability to go in there and to stabilize the middle of the ball games uh, was, was just tremendous. And, you know, he's added a cutter. And that's really helped him kind of figure out how to get left-handers out a little bit better. And, you know, that's a guy that you could potentially see factor in at the end of some ball games. Don't be surprised if Charlie's not closing out some games for us. Uh, when it comes to Jonathan Santucci, uh, like I said, all indications are his health is is totally fine. He's recovered. He's maybe throwing better than ever. What – um what do you think the time away might not be the right way to characterize it? But, but I mean, you know, and you guys are going to coach to this, growing from adversity. Um, how's he different now than before the injury? I think that's a great question. I, I You know, I, I, we talk a lot about the fact of, of handling hard, you know, handling struggle, handling adversity handling setbacks and what, what that does to to make you better and and I, I I do think he's come out of the other side of this you know better for having gone through that experience and, and the other thing about it um, you know when when Doc went in and, and looked at his elbow um, and and saw the the stress fracture there you know he, he speculated that 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 injury could have been in, in in place for a year or more you know that was not a that was not a sort of catastrophic single pitch type of injury that injury. And so, you know, he'd been pitching with that for a while more than likely, and now is fully healthy. And, and that's kind of scary. Hmm. Now he, he came into your program as a two way guy. Is there any expectation that Tooch is going to be, you know, hitting and playing in the field this year? No, I think, you know, I've, I, we always left that decision up to Jonathan and, and he's certainly a really talented outfielder. Uh, can run, can throw, has power, but I think he's seen his future is on the mound and seen that his 
best opportunity to impact our team is on the mound. And, and as a Friday night guy, that guy's going to take the ball and go out there and hopefully give you 80 to 100 pitches, five, six innings on a Friday night. You know, I, 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 he, he needs to be able to just focus on his craft. And, and so he's going to just pitch this spring. Nice. So that's your Friday night guy. Uh, it, it, it feels interesting with this group, the way that they pitched last year, um, trying to construct it in a way where you've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday starters covered and maybe more defined roles. Um, do you guys, are, are you leaning in any particular direction with how the rest of the staff is shaping out or is it kind of fluid? We really need the next five weeks. We need the preseason to be able to figure that out. You know, I think there's so many different directions that we can go. You know, certainly there's the there, there's the potential of a guy like Fran O'Shell moving into the rotation. There's the potential of a guy like James Talon moving into a starter's role. And we need to explore that. We need to we need to play around with that and see if if that's the right thing to do for those guys and the right thing to do for the team. You've got a guy like Andrew Healy that by the end of the year had really established himself as a as a viable uh, starter on the weekend. You know, pitched. It was the he was the national uh, uh, baseball uh, collegiate baseball writers association pitcher of the month in 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 April last year and was a freshman All American and pitched great in that super regional that first game of the super regional versus. UVA and and you know so that's a guy that's got some starting experience under his belt throws a ton of strikes uh Aiden Weaver we have already talked about has made a jump you know Owen Proch the stuff is ticked up so you could see him in a starting role Kyle Johnson factors in there somewhere so I just listed off about six seven guys and you know only four of those guys are going to probably start the other guys are going to wind up in the pen and so we've got a real challenge to figure out how to put the puzzle pieces together here in the preseason to make sure we've got guys in, in positions that, that not only suit them the best, but also suit the team the best. Yeah. I, look, I, I know you love your job and you love all elements of it. Um, I'm, I'm curious the mixing and matching and figuring out which machinations work and, and which are going to be better than the others. How much does that like truthfully, how does that deep down excite you and get you maybe a little it's, bit giddy? It's fun, Darren, but in a perfect world, like you've you've got it all figured out at the end of the fall, which never happens. Like it, you never it you never totally get there. But you know, just once, I'd like to be able to write the lineup and the rotation at the end of the fall and go, here it is. We know what we're <laughs> going to do now. Let's go practice that in the spring. Um, you know, we still got a lot of moving parts, both on the mound and uh, you know positionally. But the good thing is they're really talented parts. And so we just got to keep running them out there and putting them in different spots and, and kind of seeing what clicks and and hope that we've been able to kind of hit on that formula before the season starts. But the reality is it may take all the way to the start of ACC play before we know for sure kind of what that right formula is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the schedule a little bit. You guys are going to be playing all of your home games back on campus at, at Coombs. Um, for a number of years now, you had split those home games between on campus and Durham Bulls Athletic Park. Um, some renovations set to be begun, not this season, but right, but but after this season as well. Um, what does that do for your team and, and for your program, the ability to play where you practice all the time, be on campus where students are and can come to games? Yeah, we've been we, we've been talking about the the ability to sort of be all in at one venue for for the last twelve years, and and first off, super super grateful for the relationship that we have with the Durham Bulls. They've they've been wonderful partners for us, uh, and two been great to us. It's been a, a, a really unique opportunity to be able to play so many games in that beautiful ballpark downtown, the DBAP. But you know, we we. We want to be able to build our program around an on-campus venue. Uh, Coombs is such a neat setting for college baseball. It allows us to get our students out and be involved in our program. And, you know, the, the challenge is we need to invest in Coombs to make sure it's a facility that uh, can continue to attract the type of player that we need uh, to bring into Duke to, to compete at a, at a national level and, and at an Omaha level. And, that's that's what's exciting for me is that you know the university's really gotten behind us and 
Uh, we, we do uh, plan to break ground in, in, in the early part of the summer um, on a significant expansion of the ballpark, expanding the seating, redoing the dugouts, uh, adding a new indoor hitting and pitching laboratory facility, uh, locker rooms, uh, coaches' offices, clubhouse facilities and amenities. So it, it's, a, you know, it, it's a big investment and uh, grateful uh, for all of our supporters uh, that have gotten behind this initiative and recognize that, hey, building a first-class ballpark on campus is only going to help us in taking this program to the next level. Now, amongst ACC baseball media, Chris, it it is um, a talking point, I'll say, that Duke baseball teams – typically start to play better around the time that they get back to Coombs when the Bulls start playing, right? And there's there's some definitive evidence of that in some cases. Right. Um, how beneficial is that for your guys? And just like, for, what have you observed in the way of of the team plays better at Coombs over the past yeah. several years? Well, I, I've, I've, I've kind of likened it to a golfer who, you know, practices on one golf course, but then goes and plays – in a tournament on another golf course it's 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 a, it's a it's a different feel and you know our guys get really comfortable at Coombs and and get comfortable with the way the ballpark plays and sight lines and and it, it is it's our home ballpark and I think now to to play all of our games in that park just allows us to be that much more comfortable and 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 you know there's going to be some reduced wear and tear on our guys as well, and and just not not having to 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 move back and forth. And I think that will benefit our team in the long run, also. Yeah, I, for my money, it's a beautiful setting. I, I'm so excited that you guys are doing this because the view from you know behind home plate there at Coombs with the trees in the back, um, campus obviously generally is beautiful. Um, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see how it, how it turns out and, um, how the renovations go and, you know, the final product there is going to be something to behold. I think it'll be really cool for you guys. Darren, we've talked about, you know, our, our goal is, is to, is to build Coombs field into the Cameron indoor of college baseball. You know, we, that, that that's the kind of vibe and, and energy and space that we're looking to create. Yeah. I love that. I love, is, is that. I don't know what how far into plans and, and that blueprints and that sort of thing that you are is is part of that trying to create m more intimacy. Like I, I don't know if maybe you build up the stands in a certain way to where they're they're sort of closer and and maybe right over top the guy at home plate if you can. Yeah, we've talked about you know we we, we want to be able to create a, a student section down that uh, first baseline behind the first base dugout. I think expanding the seating in both directions by, uh, towards both dugouts allows for kind of a, a wraparound effect and allows us to kind of create a, a, a little more intimate environment for, for the fan experience and uh, create a little more energy and, 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 and atmosphere. And, you know, and then again, the, the most important piece is just making sure that we've got the type of um, player development facilities and amenities that, these guys need and deserve to be, you know, to be able to train and become the best versions of themselves. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to switch gears to talk about some individual players quickly before I let you go, Chris. Um, we mentioned James Talon. We mentioned Fran O'Shell, um, the latter of whom I, I got to see a little bit over the summer with Team USA. Um, and we'll go maybe with Talon first. What what has he improved on? from from year one to two because this is a big jump right I mean I think it, it's safe to say years one to two as a college baseball player might be the biggest jump for for me yeah, you hope so right um you know I think he's continuing to work on developing his off speed uh you know he's a guy that was very reliant on the fastball through the fastball 90 percent of the time and it's an elite fastball it's one of the most elite fastballs I've ever coached but being able to um not have to be so reliant on the fastball and be able to keep guys off the fastball with a, with a slider and change, I think is a big, big part of his development. And also just kind of the, the some of the, the, the nuanced parts of the game, being able to fill his position and, and, and control the run game. You know, those are, those are areas where I think you'll see growth with James this year. Yeah. And then for Fran, um, I, you know, there's, there's, 
there was a lot there to love to begin with. And then the experience with Team USA, I'm sure, just sort of built upon that, in addition to, to the natural progression. Well, it's interesting because he, um, some of the things that he's worked on this fall are very similar to, to James in that, you know, uh, Franz worked on adding a changeup uh, to his repertoire so he can become more of a three-pitch guy. And that pitch has re really started to, to, to take shape for him. And uh, you know, do a little better job uh, in controlling the run game and and the, the the things that you really need to be able to do if you're gonna if you're gonna go two and three times through a lineup instead of just one time through a lineup. Yeah. Um, last thing for you, Chris. It was widely reported in the off season you were up for some other jobs. Um, ultimately, you stayed. You're at Duke, where you've been for a while now. What is it about that place and that job that is is just right for you, you know, for now until you know, who knows, right? Whatever the, the future holds. But what what made it the right decision for for you and, and your family to, to stay there at Duke? Well, it, it's two things. It, it, number one, this is the right community for for me and my family. We, we, we love it here in Durham. Uh, I. I love the school that Thomas and Brady attend, and uh, we've got great friends uh, here in this community. So this was this was about family first and foremost, and feeling like this is the right place for us. But the other piece is just the people at Duke, and I know that becomes kind of cliched, but it's it's meaningful. Like we we got our challenges. We need to we need to address our facilities and. Uh, we, you know, Duke, Duke's not without it, it, its flaws and its challenges, but we got great people and we got great support and we've got an AD who's dynamic and, and, and forward thinking and, and, and really wants to be able to keep moving the needle for us. And so I'm grateful for Nina and I'm grateful for the other people around this place and that, that make Duke special. Got to kick some more doors down, just like the 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 GIF that you posted when you when you announced you were staying. Did you realize, by the way, that that's a professional wrestling thing? That was the Godfather, WWE Hall of Famer. I, I would. I, I did. Was sure. I, I, I was. I, I was selective in the in the in, in the uh, what the what is it? Do you call them GIFs or GIFs? It, it's uh, either. It's either. Yeah, I, some absolutely. people get offended if you call it one or the other and not what they call it. It's fine. Whatever. Tomato. Tomato. <laughs> We're excited. We got we got a door to knock down, and and I'm I'm excited. And we're not, you know, Pollards aren't going anywhere. So we're we're here to keep uh, keep kicking at that door until it finally gets knocked down. I love it, man. You know, I'm I'm glad you're you're back and and you're staying put there in Durham. Um, I look forward to seeing you. I've already got a couple of Duke games on my schedule, so I'll love be there. It. I think first for the midweek against Liberty. Um, so I can't wait for it to get started and and opening day, man. It'll be here before we know it. Gonna be here quick, Darren. Appreciate you and what you do. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Chris.